Hare Krishna. Om Akhyana Tegono Sen, 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 Slaka, Saksan, Militam, Yena, Tasmai, Sig, Abhayana. Amon Vishnu Padari Krishna Pastai Bhutali Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Namaste Sarasvata Devi Gauravani Pacharana Nirvishesha Srinivadi Paskatyai Dasatayani Shila Prabhupada Ki Today we will continue uh, discussing Chapter 25, right? That, uh, one moment, one moment. No. I mean, Chapter 25, verses 20 to 23 today. That uh, Lord Krishna just lifted the hill of Kavada. That uh, so, okay, text 20. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritam Naum Cheva Navatanam Devin Sarasvatim Vyasam Tato Jam Odiriyat Nastriya Zavatre Sunitiam Bhagavata Sevya Bhagavata Tamaski Bhakti Vartina Text 20 Chapter 25 25 the lifting of Govardhan Hill. Ataha Bhagavan Gopam Himbhutata Vajaukasa Yatopa Jyosam Visata Kirartam Sagudana the Lord then addressed the Kaut community, O Mother, O Father, O Resident of Fudge, if you wish you may come under this hill with your cows. That, uh, so, all these devotees, Kadavan are in an anxiety, great distress, and uh, Krishna invites him to come under the hill of purport. Shilavishvanachka Bhakti Thakur provides the following insight in this regard. Ordinarily, a large cow community, which includes many thousands of cows, calves, bulls and so on, could not fit under the base of a medium-sized hill like she covered down. However, because the hill was in ecstasy, being touched by the hand of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it acquired inconceivable power and felt the hundreds of deadly thunderbolts thrown upon its back by angry Indra to be offerings of soft, fragrant flowers. At times, Shigovodan was not even aware that the thunderbolts were striking. From the Hari Vansha, the Acharya has also quoted, see Krishna himself uh, has, was saying, Trilokyam ap utsate rakshitum kim punavracham, Shigovodan can give shelter to all the three worlds. What to speak of the simple land, Vraj. When Indra's attack began, and Krishna lifted the hill, the deer, wild hogs, and other animals, and birds standing on the hill's flanks climbed up to its peaks, and even they did not experience the slightest distress. 
and that's the skeletal vault. So called distress, but no pain, no suffering. It is all about rasa, we will see, especially in this section today. Text 21. Natrasa hi vakayo, matta statri nipatanat, pata vasha bayenalam, tatranam vihitam va. Translation You should have no fear that this mountain will fall from my hand, and don't be afraid of the wind and rain for deliverance from these afflictions has already been arranged. So, why should they be fearful that uh, Krishna is making, is upholding all these planets going to their orbit? Are we afraid that uh, that the planets will fall from their orbit <laughs> that uh, it's also Krishna doing that uh, so Krishna Kavikarna Puri say, says that Krishna is speaking to the bridge Vasis that uh, when when I lifted the hill huge Chunks of earth felt on the bottom and formed a natural boundary around, Gira, around the perimeter of Giraj. Interesting. This wall would keep out the torrential rains. So, so this Krishna lifted the hill and at the side, big. Uh, chunks of earth fell in such a way that they formed like dikes that the water not, could not come in. It is a really interesting arrangement that um, forget about your attachment from your former residences, Krishna says. May this place become a source of joyful pastimes for the gopis and the gopas and the gopis. And it will, we will hear that this section today, text 22. Tatanir vivishogartam Krishna vasita manasa Yatavaka samsha dana savatsha sopati vina. Their minds are specified by Lord Krishna. They all entered beneath the hill where they found ample room for themselves and all their cows, vegans, servants, and priests and for all other members community as well. Purpose, all the domestic animals of Vrindavan were brought beneath cover down hill for shelter. Text 23. So Satam Lord Krishna, forgetting hunger and thirst and putting aside all considerations of personal pleasure, stood there holding the hill for seven days as the people of Raj gazed upon him. Read the purport and then we will read the various commentaries. According to the Vishnu Purana, Lord Krishna held up the mountain while while, while his praises were chanted by the residents of Raj, and all of whom now had the opportunity to dwell together with him, and were glanced at him with joyful and amazed eyes, just the cold men and women were all elated, 
and out of loving affection they open their eyes wide. By continuously drinking the nectar of the beauty and sweetness of Sri Krishna, the essence of Vrindavan felt no hunger, thirst or fatigue. And Lord Krishna, by seeing their beautiful forms, also forgot about eating, drinking and sleeping. Sri Vishnu Sakavarti Thakur points out that seven days of continuous rains, rain from the Samvartika clouds failed to flood the district of Mathura because the Supreme Lord, simply by his potency, immediately dried up the water as it fell to the ground. This Krishna lifting of Govardhan is full of fascinating details and has for thousands of years remained one of his most pastimes. But now, what happened under the hill? Karya Samhita. When Krishna asked them Balaram and, uh, and the boys of his age, steady the hill with their sticks. But uh, seeing a great flood of water coming in, then Krishna ordered Lord Shesa and Sudarsan to come. It's interesting. And interesting details. Brilliant as the millions of suns, Sudarsha and Sakra hoovered above the top of the hill to dry up streams of water, just, yeah, just as, just as Agastya Muni drank up the ocean. So the water could not touch the hill, it evaporated before it had the possibility to come down. Surrounding the hill, Seisha stopped the upcoming flood as a shoreline stops the water of the ocean. So Sudarshan was above and Seisha was around the hill. But, uh, so further the Gaga Samhita. For seven days, Krishna steadily held Kavadan Hill as if they have as if they have, as if they had become Chakora birds. Not sure what this means. But now from Nectar of Devotion. Nectar of Devotion, we yeah, have, gives deeper insights of what's happening under the head. First we will look at Mother Yasoda. What happens with Mother Yasoda if she sees her? She sees her son picking up this hill. But, uh, so we go to chapter 43. Uh, yeah, the dairy find talks about what happened with Mother Yasoda. Sometimes there are examples of Mother Yasoda's becoming stunned in ecstasy. This was exhibited when she saw her son lifting Govardhan Hill. When Krishna was standing raising the hill, Mother Yasoda hesitated to embrace him and became stunned. The dangerous position that Krishna had accepted by lifting the hill brought tears to her eyes. With her eyes filled with tears, she could not see Krishna anymore. And because her throat was choked up, by anxiety, she could not even instruct Krishna as to what he should do in that position. It is a symptom of becoming stunned in ecstatic love. Now we have chapter 46. One of the friends of Mother Yasoda said, Yasoda, just see, just see the fun. On the one hand, there is your child, who is always captivated by sucking the milk from your breast. And on the other hand, there is a great cover down hill, which, which can obstruct the passing of the clouds. But still, just see how wonderful it is that this great cover, cover down hill is resting on the finger of your child's left hand, just as, as though it were a toy. 
is it is it not is this not very mysterious so that is a this statement next of devotion there shall Baba writes it's another example of astonishment in the devotion of service by direct perception and then we have the Nectar of Devotion, this is chapter 41, which has the title Fraternal Devotion. There if we go nine or ten paragraphs down, we can read. Dear friend, you, are, you have been standing for the last seven days and nights without any rest. This is very troublesome for you, because we see that you have undertaken a severely laborious task. We think therefore that you need continue to stand, that you need not continue to, to stand in that way holding the hill. You can just transfer it to, into Sudan's hand. So the coward boys were thinking, yeah, yeah, equal to Krishna. You, you transfer it to Sudan. Son. We are very much grief to see you in that position. If you think that Sudan is not able to support Covent Down Hill, then at least you could change hands. Instead of supporting it with your left hand, please transfer me to, to, to your right hand so that we can give your left hand a massage. This is an in, in, instance of in, intimacy showing how much the Vyasyas considered themselves to be equal to Krishna. That, uh, and then Nectar of Devotion, chapter 22. That, uh, find it in the book here. I noted the page number, 177. Well, it is explained by Krishna, and this is the title 30, 36 quality, Shai. But, uh, a person who sometimes exhibits humility and bashfulness is called Shai. As described in the Lalita Madhava, Krishna's shyness was manifested when he lifted Govardhan Hill with the little finger of his left hand. All, all of the gopis were observing Krishna's wonderful achievement and Krishna was also smiling at seeing the gopis. When Krishna's glance went over the breast of the gopis, his hand began to shake and upon seeing his hand shake, all the coward man underneath the hill became a little disturbed. Then there was a tumultuous roaring sound and they all began to pray for Krishna's safety. At this time, Lord Balaram was smiling, thinking that this cowboy man had been frightened by the shaking of the Govardhan hill. But seeing Balaram smile, Krishna thought that Balaram had understood his mind in observing the breast of the gopis, and he immediately became bashful. <laughs> Krishna. So a lot of things are going on on this hill under this hill. So everyone experiences his own rasa, his own general relationship with Krishna. That, uh, of course, we we'll see the gopis, they are exchanging glances, sidelong glances. That, uh, so, let's hear from Kavikarna Puri, his nice description of what's happening here. Yes, By holding up Govardhan Hill, Krishna associated with all his loving associates and they were taking advantage of the intimate setting. They gazed at Krishna's They gazed at, gazed at Krishna's joyful faces, praying for his victory or affectionately smelling his head, his head with parental affection, 
Ruini firmly embraced Balagam, always gives immense pleasure to her son. His parents, Vajesvara Yasuda, addressed her son. Oh, my dear child. That's interesting. She says, oh, my dear child, you are acting always due to the force of your uncontrolled senses. Said Krishna, you are acting because of your uncontrolled senses. For years we peacefully observed Indra Jagya, but then you have ab abruptly stopped it. Disregard of the demigods never brings auspiciousness. How can one get fortune if one shows enmity to demons and demigods? In the presence of these two fears, how can we enjoy living here? Although Krishna's body is inexhaustible and ever blissful, Yasuda thought that he had overworked himself. Considering that she expressed her motherly affection, by reaching out and touching his lotus hand that held the hill. She said, how can your hand, which is as pure and soft as fresh butter, bear the heavy weight of this mountain? Tell, tell, any, other, tell any other to support you. Okay, Raj, please be compassionate and give me a boon. Do something so that Krishna does not feel so much distress. All my sons, according to Shastra, are saintly persons. Then Mother Mangal starts speaking. Oh, Mother, don't speak like this. How can you say that? How can you say that Krishna is in distress? Listen, what good did the angry Indra do to us. He attacks us with his fierce clouds and thunderbolts. Just appreciate the sweetness that Krishna has manifested during the pastime of Govardhan. If Indra would not have become angry, then we would not be able to relish this nectar to our eyes. Mother Yasuda replied, O Bato, O Bold One, keeping up such a heavy load can never be a show of sweetness. Lifting the enormous weight of Giraj will cause him to become distressed and disabled. Just see, Krishna, Krishna is wet from perspiration. His, fight, his face is dried up to become pale like a lotus by the snow. How can a mother's heart tolerate seeing such hardship? Krishna replied, O oh mother, there can be anything be more fun. There can be anything be more fun than this, Krishna says. That, uh, why are they con so concerned about me? This mountain is, float, is floating on its own in the open sky. It is not on my hands. I told you before, my body is only an instrument to its will, to the will of Hirat. Nora Yasoda replied, That may be true, but how can it be that you are, that you are not tired standing here so long? holding that mountain with raised arms. O oh, intelligent one, I will believe but you said if Kofferdan gives up the joyful association of your lotus hand and flies around the sky playing on his own. Madhu Mangal, O oh, Queen of Vrindavan, don't you know this great mountain is sitting on the lotus hand of Krishna by the strength of my mantras. <laughs> That's not a mantra. By the strength of my man mantras. My, my friend is not feeling any pain from holding Giraj. That is not real. Because everyone is favorably uh, disposed 
to the Lord in their hearts. Yasuda replied, About what mantras are you speaking? I'm burning out of anxiety because of my son. His tendency is to act independently without caring for any good instruction. And now you come and you make jokes and you laugh about this. Then Lord Krishna was holding Tiraj with one hand and he played flute with the other. Noting this, Bhattu said, Oh my friend, don't be so daring, don't play your flute. Because he's afraid that we will see why. How will you protect your friends today if Giraj becomes ecstatic, ecstatic hearing your flutes and falls your hand? Because your flute has the power to destroy everything upon hearing it mountains melt, melt into rivers and rivers turn into stone. Oh look, you can do so many incredible things. So he's afraid because when Krishna plays his flute, then uh, the, all the rocks are melting and, 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 and the, he thinks Mother Mongol that, that the rocks are, that Giraj is going to melt. And then they are in trouble. Now the coward boys pray. May this, me, this mountain keep his patience and keep keeping protecting us from the calamities of inundation. If Kiraj melts under the river, in, melts into a river, then he himself will become the cause of our destruction. A person, a person, a person with great patience may sometimes thrill with ecstasy, but like an ocean, Giraj will not change his position. Just relish the nectar of Krishna's flute and give up your rest restlessness. So, seeing the coward man endeavoring to hold up the cover down, Radhika covered her face with her veil and looked shyly to the ground. Then unseen by her sakis, Radhika, beaming a sweet gentle smile to bath Krishna in a show of nectar. So the gopis, they have their own relationship with Krishna. By their glances they can do so, they can do so many things. That, uh, so, Mother Yasoda again, she speaks to that uh, thing to Bhattu, Mother Manga. Oh, bold one, the day has moved along. No, it's to Krishna. She says, Oh, bold one, the day has moved along. You appear to have lost luster by not eating. Your belly has caved in and your jewel belt has slipped off. Seeing your face has withered from fasting. You did not eat anything and you did not move an inch from here. Therefore I appeal to you because you are very compassionate. Please stop playing artistically on your flute and drop your arms so that I can feed you with my hands. I brought you some soft cakes and tasty creamy yogurt. Now taste these delicious items as, along with Ram and your friends. Bhattu said, Mother Mangal, Oh my dear friend, your mother has spoken correctly. Of course, he wants also to taste this. This gives. You should never upset her, and I'm also upset by hunger. Krishna said, O oh mother, I don't feel, feel like a single moment has passed. Why are you thinking a short time is so long? 
But since one should not disobey the superiors, it is proper for me to eat from your hands. And it continues like that. But we have also to move on. That uh, text 24. Text 24. Krishna Yoga no Bhavantam Nisyam Yendo Trivismita Istambo Basta Sankalpa Swami Gansan Sanyavara when Indra observed this exhibition of Lord Sri Krishna's mystic power, he became most astonished, pulled down from his platform of false pride and his intention thwarted, he ordered his clouds to desist. So we are back to Indra here. That, uh, so Indra became astonished that uh, he's going to give up his false pride. But now, uh, this is also described in Nectar of Devotion, chapter 29, here, page 240. Forty doubt that uh, it's at the end when the king of heaven Indra was causing torrents of rain to fall on the land of Raj, he was advised to surrender himself at the lotus feet of Krishna. At that time, Indra's fame became very dark because of doubt. Doubt, he was thinking. Krishna to be an ordinary person. But, uh, so now Indra is getting the message. Krishna is God, not me. That, um, so I will go back now to Kavikarnapuri. But I will have to read from other document, which I will bring. Okay. Yes. And try to bring it on the screen. Just a moment. It's page page hundred sixty two. Page hundred sixty two. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can bring it on the screen, then you can read along with me. Okay. By the mercy of Krishna, the danger finally ended. In the distance, the Vajravasi saw the gateways and roof top rooms of their houses glittering attractively from being washed by the heavy rains. A flesh, fresh, clear sky neared to fill all directions with auspiciousness. The people of Vrindavan felt they had just emerged from a deep, deep dark well of calamity. Come to the light of good fortune. But, uh, the earth planet thought it was again sitting on the tusk of Adi Varaha. The plants and creepers sprouted anew and unfurled fresh leaves. Just as one cured of the disease of insanity attains peace and no longer suffer from epileptic fits 
Similarly, the wind, now freed from the disease of devastation, blew gently. The river is the wives of the ocean again flowed slowly and respectfully toward their husbands, just as the forceful pushing of the mind subside as one advanced on the path of God. God realization, similarly the blasting clouds dissipated to leave a clear sky behind them. After aborting seven children, represented by seven days and night, the wife of time now gave birth to a beautiful son, appearing as auspicious a day. On that day, the Supreme Lord Giridari said, The fierce wind and rain has now ceased and the sky is totally free from the clouds of devastation, free from the thick covering of mud. The earth is now dry and smooth. After falling unconscious for one week, the sun opened his eyes. O oh, residents of Rindab, your village has returned to its normal state. Now it is time to come out from beneath the mountain that uh, so it takes 25 but, uh, kvam vapuram udita tityam vata varsham sadarunam isamyo pratam kopam kovartana daro kavit Seeing that the fierce wind and rain has now ceased, the sky became clear of rain clouds, and the sun had risen. Lord Krishna delivered the, the, the lifter of Govardhan Hill spoke to the cold community as follows. Niryata tvayata tvasham kopasa stritana paka uparatam vata vasam vyuta payasa nimnaga. My dear God, man, please go out with your wife, children, and possessions. Give up fear. The wind and rain have stopped, and the rivers, high waters, have subsided. The dust in area you go pa, son from Ada Yagodanam, Sakatodo Pakaranam, Stribana Stavirasanai. After collecting their respective cows and loading their paraphernalia into their wagons, the coward man went out. The women Children and an elderly person shall they follow them. Bhagavan Mahapitam Sailam Svastane Prabhavat Prabhu Pasyatam Sarabhutanam Stapayam Asalildaya. When all living creatures looked on the Supreme Personality of God, it put down the hill in its original place just as it had stood before. So, from the Gaya Samhita. When Krishna ordered the Gopas to take their wealth and cows and then slowly emerge from under the hill, then Krishna said to his friends, Go out. Then, so Krishna said, Go out of the hill. And they replied, They replied, You go first. But uh, we will hold the hill with our own strength. <laughs> Not, this is the Gopas. Then Krishna shifted happily some of the weight on the top to the Gopa boys. They fell devastated to the ground. With one hand, Krishna picked them all up. Then Krishna playfully sat held down where it was. So. But, uh, uh, but this is not the end of the pastime, Kovut Alila. There is another chapter hereafter. That, uh, 
plus 29. Tampe ma ve gam ni prita fat shokansu chata. Tampe ma ve gam ni prita fat shokansu chata samio pariramba tibi. Upasas neam apuchayan muda. Tadak sata bir. Yo yo ho. Sata sisa. All the rest of the Indian were overwhelmed with ecstatic love. And they came forward and greeted Sri Krishna according to their individual relationships with him. Some embracing him, others bowing down to him, and so forth. The colored women presented water mixed with yogurt and unbroken barley combs as a token of honor, and they showed auspicious benediction upon him. Shila Vishvan Atsakavarti Thakra explains that each of the residents of Vrindavan regarded Krishna in his own way as an inferior young member of the colored. Community as an equal, that's for the, the friends, or as a superior, and they dealt with him according, accordingly. Krishna's superiors offered auspicious benediction, lovely smelt his head, kissed him, rubbed his arms and fingers, and inquired with parental affection as to whether he was tired or pained. Krishna's equals laughed or joked with him. And those who were younger fell at his feet, massaged his feet, and so on. The word shine, this verse indicates that the wives of the Brahmins joined with the covered ladies to offer auspicious items like yogurt and unbroken grains. Lord Krishna received benedictions such as this. May you subdue the wicked, protect the decent people, give pleasure to your parents, and be enriched with all wealth. And compliments. Yeah. Uh, so, the reactions of the uh, Vajabhasis praising Krishna in their own way according to their own rasa. Now we have text 30. We'll hear about Mother Yasoda, Oini. Yasoda Roini Nando Rama Shabam Palinam Vara Vishna Malinga Yo Yo Yutsu Jo Ashisha Sneaka Tara Mother Yasoda Mother Roini Nanda Maraj and Balaram, the greatest of the strong, all embraced Krishna. Overwhelmed to perfection, they offered him. Their blessings. Shila Vishwana Sakabhati Taku on this verse 30. The very special position of Krishna's own mother and other intimate relatives, however, is stated in this verse, beginning with Yasoda. It is not unsuitable to include Balaram in the group that feels parental affection, Vatsali above, toward Krishna, toward Krishna, because Balaram acts in that capacity as Krishna's elder brother. One may object saying, since Balaram was so affectionate, why didn't he, uh, he uh, assume his plenary expansion of an Ananda says, since he is always holding up the earth? and himself enact the great feat of holding up Covert Hill on behalf of his younger brother. So yes, it's an untouché, all the planets are on the heads of, on the many heads of uh, an untouché, like mustard seeds. They are moving, moving to their orbit. <laughs> and, um, so that's the the, the law of gravity, we call it Sankarsan. The, the answer is that once Krishna made his decision to stop in the sacrifice to worship Govardhan, 
and to lift over downhill in order to for protect the Vajravatis, it would be improper, improper and impossible for his Amsa plenary portion Balaram to do anything else. Thus Balaram did not show his powers. As Krishna is Saktiman, the possessor of innumerable potencies, by his desire alone suitable powers will appear when necessary in his Hamsa. In the succeeding verses also this conclusion is mentioned. In this regard, sometimes ancient page paintings show Krishna as Giridhari being given butter by his two mothers, Yasoda and Rohini, while Nandamaraj and Balaram hold the cover down hill with their heads or sticks. In the Vaishnava Tosani, Silasantam Goswami says that this occurred due to being overwhelmed by love. This is the verse they are described as being beside themselves, Katara, out of their affection, Sneha, for Krishna. So, text 13. In the heavens, O King, all the demigods, including the Siddhas, Satyas, Gandharvas and Charanas, sang the praises of Lord Krishna and showered down flowers in great satisfaction. Not so, proper the demigods in heaven were just as jubilant as the residents of Vrindavan, and thus a great festival, universal festival, took place. That uh, text 32. Sanka tundu bayo nidur divideva pachodita jagur kandarva patayas tumburu pamkanipa my dear Parikshit, the demigods in the heaven resonantly played their conscious and kettle drums, and the best of the Gandharvas led by the Tumbura, by Tumbura began to sing. That, uh, so, that's text, no, text 33, the last text. Tato Nuraktai Pasu Pai Parishito Tato Muraktai Pasu Pai Parishito Ajans Pakostam Sabalo Vachadari Tata Vidam Asyakitani Govika Kajan Chayo Mudita Vidispriya Surrounded by his loving coward boyfriends and Lord Balaram Krishna then went off to the place where he had been tending the cows. But, uh, the coward girls returned to their homes singing joyfully about the lifting of Govardhan Hill and other glorious deeds performed by Lord Krishna, who was so deeply, who so deeply touched their hearts. But, uh, So, the, the purple. Before returning to their homes, the gopis shared intimate association with their lover, Sri Krishna, by exchanging secret glances. Ordinarily, they could not publicly talk about Krishna since they were chaste young girls in a religious village. But now they took advantage of this wonderful exhibition by the Lord and freely sang of his beautiful qualities. It is not all that the young man wants to, to do something wonderful in the presence of a beautiful young girl. The gopis were, were the most beautiful and pure-hearted young girls, and Sri Krishna performed the most wonderful activities in their presence. Thus he entered deep within their tender hearts, enlightening their eternal devotion to him. While Krishna was lifting Govardhan, Radha and other beloved gopis, unnoticed by others, were intimately associating with him by exchanging secret glances from a distance. While returning to their homes, 
The gopis lovingly sang about Krishna's pastimes. It should be understood that the gopis had the ability to immediately compose songs about Krishna's pastimes. Gopi Karita's pisa can mean the gopis would touch Krishna in their prema-filled hearts or who always meditated on Krishna. Or it can mean some very dear gopis whom Krishna embraced to his chest or in his mind. This phrase describes the power Krishna. Now, what is the anahta of this pastime with Hinder? The anahta is overcoming the pride of Indra. That, uh, that's one part. The second part is, this pastime eradicates the mistake that it is good to perform demigod worship. That's the second lesson we learn. Two lessons. And also, it eradicates, of course, that's the basis of the pride it takes that away, it er eradicates the, the, the mistake of the fault that I am supreme and I am worshipful. Now, I have a, a last quote from Nectar of the Devotion, page 167, Qualities of Krishna, 18, Determined. But, uh, the promise of Krishna that his devotees never vanquished had also previously been admitted by Indra when he was defeated in the Govardhan Dilla. When Krishna stopped the villagers of Raj from worshipping Indra, Indra became angry and therefore inundated Vrindavan with continuous rain. Krishna, however, protect all, protected all the citizens and animals of Vrindavan by lifting over downhill, which served as an umbrella. After the incident was, was over, Indra surrendered to Krishna with many prayers, in which he admitted by your lifting Govardhan Hill and protecting the citizens of Vrindavan, you have kept your promise that your devotees are never to be vanquished. So Indra understood. But, um, of course, the next pastime, the next chapter, 26, which we will go to tomorrow, that, uh, so we heard in this chapter yeah, because the next chapter will start with the Gopas, the coward man. They have seen how Krishna has lifted his cover down hell. That, uh, and they understood Krishna is extraordinary. That, uh, so, when they understood this, Krishna did such an extraordinary event, holding up the hill. They were staring at Krishna, thinking that this is the most wonderful thing. But, uh, so the cover men were astonished. They were amazed, shockingly amazed, you can say. It was a little shock to their system. That, uh, and they were wondering that Krishna does such um, superhuman activities and not the other side. On the other side, he acts as, as an ordinary human being. He, he lies, he becomes angry, he's hungry. That, uh, so they, they are seeing two sets of 
contradictory characteristics that um, and they will approach Nanda Maharaj to ask what um, to ask about his son. How is this possible? That, um, but typical for the presence of Vrindavan who are Nitya Siddhis, although they are seeing these wonderful things, that the power that can only be shown by God, but their love for Krishna in their asa does not diminish. And that's amazing. So we will hear about that tomorrow. We will tomorrow go to the entire chapter 26. So, Pavitra, what are your thoughts? Thank you so much. Very well. Obeisance, Maharaj. Maharaj, in text, in text number 24, yeah. we see two scenarios. Maharaj Parikshit fasted for seven days without eating, sleeping, doing anything. And here we see Krishna and the inhabitants of Vrindavan for seven days, no sleeping, no eating. What lesson can we learn from these two scenarios? Yeah. That um, we can learn, and also Maharaj speaks it as expressed on the verse of the Bhagavatam. I don't remember the exact verse, but he, will, he says to Sukadev Goswami, I'm fasting for so many day, days and I don't feel any inconvenience. I'm so absorbed in that. That's the first thing. The second thing and is that, and Krishna mentioned it, this in this chapter, in a verse, well, we heard it in the commentaries of Kapitanapur, where Krishna says to Malaya Soda, you, you are saying I'm, I'm, uh, I'm holding this hill for a whole week, but it's just like, it's just a moment that I, when it was just like a moment that uh, so um, time has a different um, dimension on the transcendental platform on the transcendental platform time becomes the servant <laughs> that uh, we can have that that those who have experience of ever uh, going into ecstasy, time is different. You are become unaware of time. It, uh, I didn't, did not have this experience. That, uh, but that is generally known, the awareness of time. And becomes so oblivious to it. Of course, we are speaking here about the a consciousness, the highest bliss of Krishna consciousness. We are not now in that state of consciousness, although we have it slowly elevated just by hearing this pastime. But to enter into this experience of this uh, Vajavasis that uh, requires greatness. That uh, Nectar the Voices explained one should follow in the footsteps of a resident of Vrindavan and get the mercy of that resident. Otherwise, you cannot enter into that consciousness. That, uh, and by that we can understand all these eternal associates are very special. We will hear in the chapter 28, that's the last chapter we will discuss, 
or Krishna shows them Vaikuntha. And they get an experience in Vaikuntha that, um, that, but finally they don't feel attracted to it. Because they have a higher platform than Vaikuntha. Thank you, Prabhu Prabhu. Does that help? Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. Mother Lalita Priti Mahi, please. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, in yesterday's class, uh, in text 5, we saw that um, Indra was blaspheming Lord Krishna as a foolish, arrogant, over-talkative child. And uh, in the reports, we see that the Acharyas, they have commented to each of the word as a praise. And uh, so similar thing um, is uh, similar thing is explained in Canto 4, when Daksha criticizes Lord Shiva as like um, Nira Patrapa, Unmadanata, something like that. And uh, there also we see that the Acharyas are actually praising uh, those words as they're giving as a praises. So uh, I was a bit curious to know what is the significance behind the Acharyas glorifying Lord using those words. So why, why do they do that? Well, we explained that in the commentaries we, let, we read, at least this is some explanation. Indra, his words should be taken in the dark meaning. He was really blaspheming Krishna. But Mother Saraswati took advantage of the situation and, and, and influenced him and made him speak in such a way that it is also glorification for Krishna. That, uh, and it's interesting, she used opportunity to inspiring to speak in a such a way that it's also a glorification. But that was not under the control of Inda, that was Saraswati who influenced. And, and that is interesting, therefore these two meanings are there. That, uh, that um, of course, this Bhagavad is we will also see by the gopis. But the gopis, they, they do it intentionally. Intentionally. They, they, you will see later also that uh, at one side they are, they, they are chastising Krishna, but then it had another meaning, glorifying them. And, and, and when, when, you re, when you read the two meanings, what the result you, you must laugh <laughs> because it's, it's very humoristic. It, it is how, how this is combined. And this, therefore the Bhagavatam is the highest poetry. It's just, just so beautiful. That, uh, but Padre Saraswati must, must have thought, yes, he's going to blaspheme Krishna, but I will make a little softer by giving this inspiring to speak glorification also. That's interesting. Thank you. There, there may be other explanations. But that, that's one I know that uh, it's because it's it was explained in in the purports by Kavikarna Puri, I think. No. Does that help? Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Yes, no. oh. Maharaj Shringa Prabhu, please. Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. This is uh, yeah, in regard to Pavitra Prabhu, what he said. I was feeling that uh, uh, because uh, seven days Parikshit Maharaj was fully absorbed in Krishna. Actually, Krishna Katha is non different than Krishna. And here also, the Brajavasis, they were fully engrossed in seeing Krishna. 
so both the things were fully directly related with krishna fully absorbed in krishna and if someone is absorbed in krishna then there is no material hunger and fatigue and uh, you know tiredness and nothing could be experienced because complete transcendental so oh, this was just uh, a, a feeling because uh, both were directly exper- experiencing fully krishna thank you maharaj yeah but uh, maharaj speaks it he uh, yeah he took the role of a sadhaka or one of practices that uh, he was is also an eternal associate of the lord but he takes that role the vachavasis they are always absorbed in thinking of krishna it's not not a moment that they are not they, it's just their nature they are nitya siddhis they cannot forget krishna for a moment it's not possible for them so they are always in that situation but but in in this govardhan lila the intensity of their love for krishna went up tremendously and and that was for this very special that uh, so for for them there is no question of suffering because because hunger is like a sort of suffering that yeah they don't experience that as we experience it but it means I have no idea. I am a conditioned soul, but uh, from the scriptures, that's what I understand. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Yeah, Mother, Mother Pope, Mother Priya. Hare Krishna, Master. Hare Krishna. I wanted to um, uh, share that. Um, you know, sometimes uh, maybe other devotees have this experience too that. Um, well, my experience was doing book distribution during uh, like December marathons. Sometimes we get so absorbed in the, the service book distribution that the same thing happens. You know, you forget about hunger, thirst, you don't feel tired. You don't even, uh, you, know, you just don't feel anything. And then, uh, so we're doing book distribution for all day. And then let's say uh, 6, 7 p.m. we stop. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> like walking back to the Sankirtan van and then all of a sudden you realize that you know I, I didn't even go to the bathroom for the last nine hours <laughs> you know and then all of a sudden like oh no where's the nearest toilet and I need I'm so hungry I'm so tired you know it's like it all hits you after you stop but during the time when you're doing it it's like you don't feel anything so it's kind of like a similar um experience that you just go to another that you just get into that you know that i'm sure many devotees have experienced mm-hmm. this on harinam or different so even cooking you know if you're cooking a feast you can just be in the kitchen for you know uh, six or seven hours cooking and you, you don't not, nothing else is happening you know just you're just absorbed in that so i just wanted to share those little experiences yeah, yeah that's That is the uh, normal situation where we should always be, always deeply absorbed in our service. It's a blessing if you experience it. But, uh, also, I wanted to ask a question, because before when when uh, we were hearing about the um, the rainfall and the flooding, it, it wasn't only in Vrindavan, but it was all over. It seemed like the description was saying that it was all over the universe. Yeah. I think you even said like from Swarga to um, Rasa Tala or something. So it's all the way to heaven and down to some of the, the lower planets. But when Krishna lives over on hill, it seems that he gives shelter only to the uh, Rajavasis. So what's going on with it? I mean, does everybody else die and drown or like what happens to them? Because it seems like the demigods are coming out and they're they're all fine. Um, is there any description of that? Yeah, of course, the, the demigods are unaffected to their subtle bodies. That, uh, but ordinary human beings or whatever. Yes, many may have suffered. 
but um, there's no description of that in the Bhagavatam. But uh, how, how, because uh, of course we have Kavine Kavikarna Puri who mentioned that it, 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 is, it disturbed the wine drinking festival of the old ladies of um, Patal. So there were also some disturbance. It, it did, did not say that they died, that uh, I, I don't, I can, cannot answer that, but it's uh, normally it's auspiciousness. It's inauspicious to die during the pastime of the Lord. Of course, not for demons. <laughs> that, uh, but uh, there is no more, no more information about that in the Bhagavatam. But it's an interesting thought. Thank you. Uh, good. Then we will do more here about uh, questions. Yeah. About the doubts, about Shabbasis. They will oppose Nanda Maharaj and we'll hear of this pastime that and see what Nanda Maharaj replies. But there are still a few chapters to go. After that there will be Indra. Indra who understood his mistake and wants to uh, Apologize, he will apo apo apologize to Krishna, bring Surabi with him. That pastime takes care, takes place near to Govinda Kund, Govardhan. That uh, I've been there, many of you also, probably. And I remember looking at my telling the pastime 20 years ago on death of uh, King Indra that uh, good let me see tomorrow Hare Krishna Shai Prabhupada Hare Bhavad Jai, thank you Maharaj Hare. thank you